Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Two years ago, the city of Gillette had over 800 homes for sale. Today that number is down to 300, school enrollment's up, and the energy industry is hiring. How did Gillette persevere? In a two-part Wyoming Chronicle, we'll visit with Campbell County leaders to see what the future holds for the city that calls itself the energy capital of the nation. Gillette, next on Wyoming Chronicle. Funding for Wyoming Chronicle is provided in part by the Dragicevich Foundation, supporting the work of the Wyoming State Parks. And as we begin our two-part discussion about the economy in Gillette and in Northeast Wyoming, we're going to begin with Phil Christofferson. Phil is the CEO of Energy Capital Economic Development here in Gillette. Phil, welcome to Wyoming Chronicle. Well, thank you, Craig. We have lots to learn about Gillette and its economy. Um, Things have been very different in the last two years here, to say the least. Yes. A little later on in our show, we'll visit with the president of Gillette College, the chairman of the Campbell County Commission, and a state senator. But we want to begin, Phil, with you. Um, you have your pulse on the local economy. That's your job. Take us back to March of 2016 and what happened here in Gillette then. Certainly. Um, I'd like to go back a little bit further before that. Um, Gillette's economy has always been pretty hot. Uh, it's you know always been boom bust, but it's always been pretty active. Uh, we had an unemployment rate of about two and a half to three percent. Fully employed, if you wanted a job, you could find one anywhere in town. Things were booming in Gillette. We were going great guns. Um, people were really excited about it. Uh, very comfortable with that amount of growth, that amount of uh, what was going on. And then in March of 2016, there was a big layoff at some of the coal companies, and it scared the community. Things got tough really fast. Um, there were over 500 people laid off in a single day. Uh, we had a call from the governor's office, did a conference call with the business council, the governor's office about what are we going to do? We've got to do something. Um, the community um, was devastated for a short time. But very rapidly after those layoffs happened, a community spirit generated that brought the community together that said we're going to stay strong. But for a time, not 100, not 200, not 500, almost 1,000 houses on yep. the market for sale. That was still to come after the March decline. Um, the, the layoffs in March really impacted the community. It took the wind out of the community. People got nervous, got scared, got fearful. People started leaving the community. Um, that stay strong attitude, though, kept the community going. And people decided to pull together and band together and say, we're going to survive this. We're going to come through it. Now, it was bad. The unemployment dropped. Um, employment dropped quite a bit. The unemployment rent wait, rate went up. And so we were severely hit. Houses were on the market. The housing market was uh, severely impacted. Uh, at the time, prior to the, the bust, um, there'd be a long waiting line to get into restaurants. Um, you'd go out to eat and you'd wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour to get in. Um, after the bust, uh, restaurants were in trouble. We had one go out of business. Um, you know, it was, it was tough times. Give me a sense then of that discussion with the governor, of the discussion with the business council on what were we going to do? What was the reaction? How was Gillette to respond? Um, well, with the, the phone call with the governor was very, it was a good call because we could tell that the state was behind us. The governor's office was behind us, the Department of Workforce Services was behind us, saying what can we do, what can we bring to Gillette to help the, the community. Uh, so they established some workforce uh, programs, uh, got some grant money in here to do some retraining, worked with the college to help uh, laid off employees, uh, targeted specifically at the laid off coal mine employees. Um, you have to remember at that time too, the oil industry was going down. And so it was a it was a double bang. Uh, oil industry had been going great guns, and all of a sudden it dove off a cliff as well. So we were hit, you know, with two major layoffs in a short amount of time. But the state did come together and uh, support us and put some programs in place to try and help us. Um, they worked to some extent. Uh, to some extent, people 
left town. Yeah, our population took a big hit. We dropped from about 32,000 to around 29,000. Uh, so that was a big hit. Our schools started suffering and uh, school enrollment went down. Uh, and so it was, it was difficult times. People were quite nervous about the future of Gillette. And here you are in charge of, so to speak, economic development for the community. What were you thinking at that time? And what did that mean to you then? Well, ever since I came here in 2014, we've been working hard and, and shouting the message, we've got to diversify. We have to you know, broaden our industry. We have to do something more than just coal and oil. And it pretty much fell on deaf ears. People were happy with the way things were and pretty satisfied with it. All of a sudden, people started paying attention that, yeah, maybe we do need to diversify. Maybe we need to do something so that if there's another downturn, we're not affected as severely. You know what? Our economy is coming back. Uh, Oil is coming back. Coal mines have started hiring back. We shipped out over 300 million tons of coal last year, uh, which wasn't a great year, but it wasn't a bad year. Certainly a lot better than the year before that. And so things are coming back in the economy. Uh, if you want a job today, you can go to a bunch of different places and find some jobs in you know restaurants, the service industry. But if you're a welder, an electrician, or a diesel mechanic, you could probably find a job today in any one of a dozen places. Well, Phil Christofferson, best wishes to you as you continue our, your efforts relative to economic development here in Gillette. Thank you. Appreciate your being with us today. We have more people to visit here in Gillette. We're going to visit now with Mark Englert. He is the Vice President and, and um, CEO of Gillette College with Senator Jeff Wasserberger and also with Chairman Mark Christensen of the Campbell County Commissioners. Stay with us as we learn more about Northeast Wyoming. And as we begin our second segment in looking at the economy here in Gillette in Camel County, we're on the campus of Gillette College with Dr. Mark Englert, who is the president and CEO of, vice president, vice president and CEO correct. of Jet, Gillette College, a part of the Northern Wyoming Community College District. Dr. Englert, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Generally, when people think about community colleges, I think they, they realize maybe they're more important in a time of an economic downturn, that there might be more people who need to be retrained, who need to find additional employment or, or other employment. Has, has that been the case here in Gillette? It, it certainly is the case. And actually, I, I think the, you, you hit the premise of the community college uh, right on the head. We tend to be responsive to communities' needs. And, and, and certainly a large part of that is, is workforce uh, development, workforce, uh, workforce preparation. So we are preparing next generation workers. And when you see a decline in the economy, you see people looking for different opportunities if our um, viewers could see out the window, we can see the technical branch sure. of Gillette College where diesel mechanics and welders are trained. But maybe that's not in an industry that those folks are needed as much anymore. How do you decide, um, look, how do you look into the crystal ball to decide what folks in Northeast Wyoming will need as part of their education yeah, in the future? That's a great question. And, and one of the things that, that we do is we, we have great relationships with our business partners as it is, and they tend to tell us what's happening in their industries and what their needs are going to be going into the future. We work closely with economic development, and that's probably, uh, that, that's probably the forecaster, if you will. What, what types of industries are we looking at attracting to our community? Uh, what are the demands going to be in the future? And then for us as an organization, we continually have to look out into the future and see what, what are future jobs going to really require? What, what types of things are going to be needed? Uh, the, the beauty of what we have in the tech center quite honestly, is that when you have industrial electricity or when you have diesel and welding and hydraulics um, and machining, you have components of industries that exist worldwide that are, are in high demand, so they can be tied to, to uh, manufacturing and those types of things, which makes it a very, very uh, nice commodity to have. It, it creates a tool set for our completers or our students who then can apply in very different uh, areas of work. Obviously for the most part, ours has been in the energy sector, but it still allows us to diversify an economy a little bit because you have a skilled workforce. Give me the numbers of students here at Gillette College. Total, it's over 2,000. Yeah, it is. Our, our headcount annually is around 2,300, <clears throat> up to 2,500 students annually. Uh, we've seen that number increasing uh, almost every year for the last 10 to 15 years. Our full-time equivalent's about 1,100. Uh, which has grown as well. And, and the, the number that we watch real closely is the number of students who are full-time students right off, the, uh, right off their initial ad admit to the college. And we've seen that uh, number grow to about almost 600 
over the last seven years, which is an indication that one, more and more students are coming to us as full-time students, and, and we've intentionally tried to attract traditional age students, so we're seeing more students in that uh, demographic as well. Um, your statistics say 85% or more, maybe, stay in Campbell County. Right. Do you anticipate, anticipate that being the norm here in the next five years or so? We certainly hope so. It's, you know, it's an obligation we have to our community, and that's the beauty of a community college, is that you serve, serve community needs. So uh, what we look at is that about 85% of our students, total student population, come from Campbell County, and it's slightly more than 80 who stay here and work after they complete with us which it tells us, well, there's a great connection to the demands in our community. Uh, I think we'll, one of the drivers that we'll, we'll look at as we diversify uh, our economy are our graduates staying here and working. And full disclosure, um, Wyoming PBS is a licensee of Central Wyoming College. That's correct, yeah. Um, KCWC. So, well, Dr. Engler, it's been a pleasure. We have much more to learn about yeah. the community of Gillette and the, the county of Campbell sure. County. So thanks for joining us on Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you. We're pleased to be joined by State Senator Jeff Wasserberger. Senator, you're here from Gillette. Um, you have a lifetime um, of experience with education. You've been here for quite some time, and you're also the director of the Bochies here in Gillette, which is a central part in funding Gillette College. Senator, you've had a lot of experience with state government, former member of the House. Yes. And now you're in the Senate. Get up to 30,000 feet with me, if you will. You've watched the economy here in North, Northeast Wyoming really tank bottom out and now kind of coming up a little bit. What's your perception today on Gillette's economy? Well, that's a very interesting question. I mean, two years ago, I was scared to death of where we were gonna end up because it appeared to me like the economy was gonna completely tank. Uh, but what has happened in the last several years in the economic indicators, uh, we lost about 400 students the very first year of the bust. And last year we lost about 20 students. This year we're up 20 students. And so we see that in the school system. We're also seeing that our economy is improving through our sales tax, which is up. Uh, it has not gotten back to where it was in 2014. So the city, which is funded almost primarily all the sales tax, has gone through some serious issues of cuts that they've had to do. Um, we also had a situation where we tried to pass a quarter percent uh, sales tax for the college and that was voted down. Um, and, and that would have replaced a lot of the funding that Bochies used to give the, the Gillette College. Um, so we're seeing, you know, coal production slowly come back. Uh, we're never going to get, I don't think, to the $440 million million tons that we had uh, four or five years ago. But we're going to level out, I think, at $300 million to $320 million tons. Uh, and that's going to be a revenue source for the state. I think that the, the, the oil boom that we're seeing is, is very encouraging. Uh, yesterday I checked the price of oil was at 68. Uh, and so uh, we're seeing through technology and horizontal and directional drilling and fracking, we're seeing an oil boom which is starting down on the Campbell Converse line and down into Douglas and that's, that's helping substantially. And I want to tell our viewers, we'll be visiting with the folks at Cyclone Drilling here in Gillette and also the mayor of Gillette next week here on Wyoming Chronicle to continue our discussion about Gillette's economy. Senator, I want to talk about diversifying Wyoming's economy and whether that equates to diversifying Campbell County's economy. Um, in your eyes, you're certainly well aware of the governor's Endow initiative. And is there the sense of urgency here in Campbell County to diversify as there might be in other parts of Wyoming? Well, I think at least my sense is, is as high as it can be uh, because Community we- Community share that view with you? Well, yes, some people do, and, and I don't think that others do either. But so it, it's a very difficult sale because the, the very conservative group within Campbell County sees economic development as, as corporate welfare. And that makes it very difficult to bring in companies like Weatherby, uh, start talking to Atlas Carbon, bringing those companies in to try and diversify and add value to coal. The problem with adding value to coal is lots of times when we do, the amount of coal you're using isn't very much, but what you really are doing is adding jobs to your economy. And, and so that's what's important. And, and the real key is, at least here at Gillette College, is 
small businesses and the jobs that the graduates of this institution can provide to your local economy. And, and those small businesses are really the, the, the heartbeat of economic development. Businesses with less than nine employees that just start up and get going. And I've always had a huge belief in John Hines. John Hines was state senator and I replaced him when he retired. But John said to me one time, Jeff, nothing's going to be done until the savings is spent. Until you spend up the legislative stabilization reserve account, nothing's going to be done. And how fast that happens is ultimately either two more years after this budget session or, or, or two years after that. And I think that the day of reckoning happens when LISRA is, is zeroed out. So it's not the rainy day fund, it's the drought fund. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Is that the way to look at it? Yeah, that's... Senator Wasserberger, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to visit with you. And thank you for joining yep. us on YM Chronicle. All right. Thanks for having me. You bet. And in our final segment here at Gillette College, we're pleased to be joined by the chairman of the Camel County Commission, Mark Christensen. Um, Mark, welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Appreciate the opportunity. We have a lot to talk about relative to Gillette's economy. And to begin with, give us a sense of how the county has been impacted. Um, so, sure. so let's, so the best way I like to look at it is if you think Camel County is different than the rest of the state. So I thought Jackson first, was different that, than the that, that's, a, that's a different exception. <laughs> sure. But like, if you look at Camel County, a lot of services that are traditionally developed, handled by cities are delivered by the county here. So recreations through the county. Um, we have the only county-run juvenile probation department in the state. We have a bunch of other things. And so what happens is you enter a situation where for us in two years, you went from a $6.2 billion assessed valuation to a 4.2. And at the same time, you lose 50% of your sales tax revenue. Now, the county is fortunate in the fact that uh, Unlike the city, who the majority of their revenue comes from uh, sales tax, the majority of ours comes from an assessed mill. But those quick changes like that are really hard to adjust to. Um, you add to that the fact that we had the bankruptcies of the mines, mm -hmm. and you know we we still have one creditor who still hasn't paid, and so you know that has uh, that flows through to the county, the schools, to everybody that gets a share of those mills. So give me your perspective then on where is the bottom? The bottom was, was a few months ago. We're at the bottom and that's where we're gonna stay. Give so, me that perspective. So I, I think anybody who thinks that coal is gonna have this big comeback is naive. Uh, regardless of what, we, we hosted uh, EPA Administrator Pruitt a couple weeks ago and then we also had a clean power plan listening session. and. Regardless of the regulatory climate, the markets have decided that carbon is a problem. And so, you know, the best way I can tell everybody Do is- people understand that, Mark? It seems to me that people they figure don't. it's just regulation. We have a favorable Republican administration. That regulation is disappearing. We're back on track. There's, there's absolutely, people don't believe it, and they need to. Because if you look, Campbell County, the best coal year ever was 2008 and we produced 446 million tons. And then last year, we produced about 270. And so in that roughly nine year period, you went from 446 million to 270. Now, la I'm sorry, that was the year before last. Now this past year, it looks like we're gonna be right around 300 million. But anybody who thinks that the 300 is stable there's some question there because a lot of the reason that that 300 was was great was because everybody's inventories that powered their power plants with coal were low, and so there was a lot of coal that was bought short-term contracts. Stocking, if you will. Exactly right. Yep. And so now, if you were to follow this last quarter, the production's back down again. Mark, you were quoted in the Gillette News Record recently as saying this: "Part of the problem is that nobody has had to pay for anything in Campbell County." and they don't want to pay for anything. What were you thinking when you said that? So we've all gotten spoiled. So first thing I will tell you is I do business in multiple states. And, and in a couple things, I do real estate development. But uh, my family, I grew up on a ranch and we have interests in 
Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska. And, you know, here, Wyoming's this kind of utopia that when I went to grad school, I was telling everybody about because we paid no tax. Your, your kid can go to high school basic or can go to college basically for free. Um, you have an excellent education system. You have great facilities. And uh, that's, all that, that's all because of the energy industry. And so if you look here, um, you know, I, I haven't seen the most recent one, but the Taxpayers Association always comes out with their study and it's like 30, I mean, I'm gonna use rough numbers, but it's $33,000 a year in services for a family and it's $3,200 a year in taxes that are paid at the state and local level. And nobody's ever had to pay anything. And so they don't want to. It's the same thing that was the quarter cent here. We were talking about a quarter cent to plan for economic development in the college. And that's the fact we have 5% sales tax in Campbell County. Um, we have the lowest mills in the state. The county doesn't even tax all 12 mills. The people are also fortunate that they get their fire service in the base mills as opposed to another fire district. Um, there's, not, there's not bonds that are being paid off separately. Um, everybody's got this great level of service. They've got great facilities and they don't pay anything for it. You're part of Endow. What needs to change and let me ask you another question. Is this county considering um, diversification imperative away from maybe the energy, energy sector? So the elected officials are very well aware of it. Um, I had a conversation the other day. We were talking about elections and uh, it was the quarter cent and somebody was like, everybody needs to get out there and vote. It's your right. And I was like, yes, you have a right to vote, but you have a responsibility to vote educated. And, you know, if you look around at economic development, there's been a lot of stuff that's been tried in Gillette for 30 years, and a lot of it hasn't been very successful. This building we're sitting in, this was supposed to be a call center park, like business park for mm -hmm. call centers. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was repurposed to become the Gillette College campus, and, and I think that we would all agree that was a good move. But part of the problem is, is we've got strategic advantages, and then we have other things. And like, when I look at Northeast Wyoming, the advantage is cheap energy, a highly skilled and qualified blue collar workforce. And uh, there's different parts of the state that have different things. And what I like about Endow is, as opposed to right now, I feel that in some ways with the business council, we give everybody just a little bit of money, we spread it around the state so that everyone's happy. And part of what I like coming out of Endow is that there's, the, there's actual focus on selecting and designating certain communities as different improvement type zones. But at the same time, we can take advantage of our strategic opportunities. So if you look at Campbell County and Wyoming, for too long we've just taken coal and put it in a train or oil and put it in a pipeline. And there are opportunities for some enhancements of that. Um, I'm excited with the ITC opening. I can tell you How from- How important is that to Campbell County? It's huge. And you're talking about the integrated test center. Yes. Why is it so huge? So if Campbell County wants to refocus its economy, you gotta take advantage of your strategic advantages. And those advantages, as I said, are cheap energy and this blue collar workforce. And that energy resource, the best way to take advantage of it is to turn it into something else or enhance it or to do something with it here. And it was back on my question earlier with when you and I were talking uh, coal production. So, you know, I hear a lot of talk right now on uh, coal exports. Coal exports is like a red herring. So coal exports in the, in the greatest year ever out of the PRB was I think 10 or 20 million tons. And most of that came out of a mine in Montana. Build me a port and we shall export. Yeah, and that's what everybody says. But like at the same time, you know, your, your domestic demand went from 446 million tons to 270 in this market. So even if you were to 10 times the amount of export, it still doesn't even begin to offset what's already been lost. And so that's what people don't realize is that you've got to look at what you're gonna do with this resource. And so I really see Campbell County becoming kind of the, um, the Silicon Valley of advanced carbon research. There's a, there's a group of people who realize we need to do something. And those are people who, who work in other industries or who, who, are, who have employers that move them around or children somewhere else. And those people know we need to do something, but there's a large part of them that just, they don't wanna, I think they're afraid of the state changing, but 
more than the state changing, they're just afraid of any amount of money being spent on diversification. Well, Chairman Christensen, we could so, probably talk all afternoon, but yeah. um, thank you so much for sharing your views with us today on Wyoming Chronicle. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.